I think we got this working. So I know the plan was to start playing Fear, but uh, that one is still downloading at my, my horrible download speeds. So I thought we'd start the playthrough of uh, XCOM. Uh, UFO Defense, or Enemy Unknown as it's called in, in certain circles on the other side of the pond. We are playing um, a slightly modified version. No game mechanics have been changed, just a couple notification windows have been updated. And uh, a number of bugs have been fixed. Last time I played this must have been about five years ago. Uh, one of the original bugs was no matter what difficulty you selected, it would always be beginner. So the first time I played this on my original XCOM CD, which... If I still... yeah, here it is. Which I was lucky enough to buy at Sam's when I was... gosh, I don't know. 12. Experienced that bug, so I had to pick up the Steam version to get a, a working copy. It would just work in Windows 7, since it requires a bit of tweaking just to run in a 64-bit system. Uh, I have beaten this game a number of times, and uh, I think the most recent one was on Superhuman. We're going to give that one a shot. No cheesing. Uh, one of the easiest ways to cheese in this game is to save at every turn or to save almost at every mission and just to reload the mission if the things don't go poorly. We're going to do monthly saving and uh, we will recover, we will only load the save if we completely lose the game, which happens if you lose all your funding or get a horrendous score at the end of the month. So there are many... Uh, your first base is actually pretty important. A lot of people do it in, in Europe because it covers, your radar will cover all of these uh, areas over here. Uh, there's a good argument to put it somewhere around here, so you can cover ch China, Japan, and India. Personally, I don't go for any of that stuff for my first base. My first base is always uh, usually right where I'm now living in Minneapolis, because it covers the U.S. and Canada. If you keep the U.S. happy, uh, you only need to keep one country happy for the entire game in order to not lose. If you lose all your funding, the U.S. starts off at a million, and that's usually enough just to keep things eking along. Your main income is going to come from manufacturing as we go on. So I'm going to go ahead and build my first base here. And you see time immediately start flowing. Something you learn as you play this game is uh, you will eventually be attacked by aliens. And this is the worst possible base layout for defending against that. Enemies can come in, pretty much, in any hangar, and through the access lift. So what we need to do to get started is to remove all the access, most of the access points possible. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to move a hangar down here and we're going to uh, rearrange it so the access points are limited. We'll have a number of general stores here and this this will be our main access. It'll be a pretty interesting look once we get going. So let's get this started. We're gonna need a big hunk of our money right away as we have to remove this, this, and this, move these items out of the way. In addition to that, we also immediately want to build a large radar system. Um, I didn't check to see if this was fixed in this version, but if you look at our base information, we have these these sliders here for short and long range detection. Basically, it gives you five percent chance every time it cycles. And I'd, if we look at the, uh, the UFOpedia in a second, we'll be able to uh, get a better understanding of how that works. But usually having one large and one small radar system is enough to to catch or to see most of the uh, most of the aliens flying over your area. We'll be able to fix this later with uh, a new technology. But right now we're just going to be moving this general store is over there. We're also going to uh, build ourselves another laboratory up here. And uh, 
We might as well start building up this way. This will just be uh, disposed of once we get there. Once we get this built and out of the way. So let's build one more thing and be sure not to use too much money right now. Actually, I'm going to move that small radar up. Alright. As well, we want to get rid of some of our original equipment. Pistols are useless. Not as useless as the, the XCOM 2 pistols, but pretty bad. I don't like using auto cannons. I do like using heavy cannons very much. Having two guys with heavy cannons, and we'll, we'll buy some more ammo for now, but just in case something comes in, we'll make sure we have these equipped. And I love the rocket launcher. You give the rocket launcher to your most accurate guy. Uh, the number is somewhere around, when his accuracy rating, somewhere around 70. He almost has a 100% chance to hit anything with an aim shot. He just sits in the back, uh, anywhere where he has a clear line of sight to where your scouts are, and he just waits to have a command to attack. So we'll go ahead and give him three to start off with. And we have eight soldiers in here, so we start with eight grenades. In addition to that, what we want to do is uh, equip one of our avalanche missile launchers onto here. And we want to get rid of this cannon and give him the two Stingray missiles. I don't really like cannons. You have to get far too close. And uh, to get close means they can shoot your interceptors down. And they're very expensive to replace this early on in the game. And then we'll go ahead and get rid of these ship cannons we don't need anymore. And the cannon rounds. Our pistols. Pistol clips. Have again to get rid of our autocannon. And our ammo. Not really worth. We don't really need this money right now. It's useful. But more importantly, we want to free up this uh, space. So to start off, some people don't like using these tanks. I like using them simply because they make awesome scouts. They don't uh, suffer any uh, energy loss as a mission goes on. And if you lose them, you don't lose any trainings of your the training of your shoulders. They can take a couple hits, and until you have armor, they make the best the best forward scouts. I'll grab a couple of these just to make sure we have extra. And some high explosive ammo. And some incendiary ammo for our heavy cannon guys. And uh, some large rockets as we use up our small rockets. Um, stun rods, I always have one stun rod per person. And just in case they go face to face with an alien. Um, reaction shots are very important in this game, both yours and the enemies. Um, if you happen to be right in front of someone, you can stun them without uh, triggering a reaction fire shot, which is fantastic. And of course, one of these electro flares per person, uh, absolutely needed during night missions. And just a couple high explosives in case we need to blow open a, a UFO door or something. We only have one of these on the ship each time. And research. Um. What you start off with is a, everyone has their own thing. Many kits are nice to have. They out are, however, useless until you have some sort of armor. Everything will just kill you in one shot. So we're just going to go ahead and start our laser weapons. Get ourselves uh, laser pistols and rifles, and that'll give us a good start as well. And, uh, oh yes, I wanted to get a couple more soldiers so I can weed out the bad ones. And... You don't want to get too many units up front because their upkeep is going to be ridiculous. This is going to cost me an extra 600000 per month off the bat. I'm going to start with five until we have some money to play with, and we don't have any anything to build yet, so we're going to keep the engineers down until we need them. And while I'm here, we're going to grab a couple more of these missiles. So, now we're full on storage space. It'll help once we get this built. And now, at the very beginning, we're just going to wait for that first UFO to stop by. Let me go ahead and save the initial build. January 99, by the way, senior year in high school. Unfortunately, nothing cool like a UFO invasion happened that time, that year. Alright, so we got a whole bunch of items. 
We should be getting the uh, the tank next, or the heavy weapons platform. Almost. All right, there we go. So now that we have all our new soldiers in, we can go ahead and, and take a look at what we have here. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to try to find our the guy with the highest firing accuracy. There's 69. And he is going to be our rocket launcher guy. The way you want to set this up is that you basically have two classes of people when you're playing XCOM. Well, there, there are many ways to play, but the way I play is I have scouts and I have snipers. Um, both you and the aliens have a view range of 20 tiles. That's how far you can see another enemy. You can shoot, however, anywhere. You can shoot completely across the map if you want, as long as you have a clear line of sight. Not obstructed by walls or trees or whatnot. So you have people with high firing accuracy, they sit, sit back and they're going to sit there and they're going to do any of the sniping rolls, which will allow them to go and kill aliens without triggering reaction fire. Your scouts on the other hand are going to be the guys with high reactions and high time units because they're going to be moving, moving really fast across the map. Uh, I'd like to stick with the reactions as my my primary for these guys. So anything over 50 reactions, they become a scout. Anything under, they're pretty much going to sit in back. So we're going to want five scouts if we can. We have you. Two. Three. Oops, I forgot his name. I'm gonna have two Rudies. Actually, I'm going to name this one after Vax, since he's actually sitting in the channel right now. Vax, you're a scout. You are effectively a meat shield right now. Alright, so we have three. And now we're going to take the guys in 49, 49 reactions, and they'll be scouts too, so we need two more. This guy's name is Bernard. A lot of people uh, who have played this game often say to get rid of guys with uh, low bravery. I don't really think it's that big of a deal. I operate on the premise, if shit hits the fan, they're all going to panic no matter what. You really can't help that. So, yeah, as long as you stay on the offensive and you play cautiously, it's, it's relatively easy to avoid uh, panic and berserk cascades. But watch what will happen now is uh, I'll go and have one. Although this guy at 10, I'm probably just going to get rid of, so he's going to be trashed. Because he doesn't have anything really good in any of his stats. It's a really low roll overall. Do we have any more 10s? No. Oh, that scout. Let's get ourselves a different scout. One more scout. I had a 48 as well. Yeah, Kevin will be a good scout. And he's got nice throwing accuracy, which is always a bonus. All 
Alright, and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pick the peep the five highest guys, the five highest firing accuracies if it's left over. Four of these guys. Each of my scouts get a smoke grenade. Very useful in the beginning of the game. There we have two of these. I like to give the each guys two clips. I don't like armor piercing. So that puts us at three, nine. All right, and that's ten. Ten grenades, one high explosive, five smoke. All right, still waiting for a tank to come in. So we got Calvin left, forty-two. Oh, we gotta get rid of you. So we have 42, 53, and 42. So you're definitely going to be a sniper, Jurgen. Jurgen. And we have 42, 30, 51, 42, 20, 56. I'm going to go ahead and use this one since he has more strength as well. Akinori. And one of the benefits of using the launcher that allows me to run this game on uh, no, Windows 7 is I can reorder them on the uh, Sky Ranger. So he's a spare, just in case one gets injured, and that's probably going to happen. We move all our scouts to the front, since we'll want them out of the... Uh, I'm going to assume this is first in, first out. This will be something that we'll, we'll learn quickly. <laughs> <laughs> on our first mission if I have this uh, set up correctly. But for now, we'll have this this way. We'll have the rocket launcher in the very back. He'll be pretty much keeping eyes on the, the Sky Ranger. And then the snipers will fan out from the Sky Ranger and we'll have, basically, we have five of these guys, four of these guys. They'll be almost moving in pairs. <laughs> And we're going to need another general stores no matter what. Excellent. Yeah. 
And there we go. Just to make sure we have enough of these for the next round. Make sure we have some more smoke grenades. Uh, proximity grenades I enjoy using very much, but not until uh, we start using large UFOs and we actually want to just pretty much close doors behind us. You can't do it, you can't lock a door, but you can place a proximity grenade in front of it and hope an alien walks over it. So we'll get an extra couple, a bunch of those. And grenades. Always have grenades, people. Don't forget to use them. If you can't shoot an alien because there's a tree in the way, sometimes you can throw a grenade over the tree and land it right on his head. And we got our first laser. Projects already. Once we get this pistol researched. Excellent. So now we have our first small UFO. Oh, and that's going to be fantastic. Good timing. Laser weapons can be built using only money, and all laser weapons are good for uh, creating profit. So you just start building a number of them. And I'm going to hope he doesn't run away. Just in case, I'm going to throw this interceptor at him as well. This is a night mission. A lot of people will avoid night missions at all costs because aliens do not suffer uh, their vision being reduced by darkness. Uh, but we shall see how it goes. So now comes the fun part of actually equipping <laughs> all our guys. Our HW guy gets our rocket launcher and rockets. Everyone gets. Uh, he did not get one of these. Everyone gets this for the start and a grenade. Snipers make sure they have their rifles. Let's see what do we got here. can increase strength in this game simply by doing things while carrying a heavy load. It will not be a problem to increase that as we play. I don't mind everyone being a little over encumbered. This is also something that that's comes with the patch. Uh, what it does is it, it causes you to expend extra energy, if I remember correctly. If I'm wrong, I won't be able to move, but then we'll be just be able to drop things on the ground. It's quite alright. Not a big deal this early in the game. Now, our soldiers are going to die. You cannot avoid it in this game. No matter what you do, they will die, and many of them are going to die early on. He has some extra strength, so he gets to carry the heavy weapons. And I don't know what you're equipped with, so... And this is incendiary, actually quite useful for a night mission. Got a nice 
place them out here. Making sure I have a bit of everything here. And you get the other one. Heavy weapon guys will not get stun rods to start off with until they have some more strength. We gotta make sure all our scouts have them. For now we'll avoid this. Not too worried about with these small UFOs. Alright. Someone is missing an electro flare. Now you're. There we go. And that, my friend, is why we have a tank go outside first. I am actually having some scrolling issues here. Let's lower that down a bit. I like fire speed slow so I can see where the fire is coming from. I don't care how fast my guys move, but I want aliens to move slow as well. So we know there is an alien somewhere around here. But we don't know from where exactly. We're going to go ahead and, and actually we're going to end this turn right away. So that we don't expose our guys. Again, a tank is only money. Scout out. There we go. Now the downside to tanks is that they cannot uh, gain stats. So the rule of thumb is if they're within eight squares you ought to fire. If they are over eight but within the screen you snap and if they are out of the screen you aim. So we're gonna go ahead and give this guy a snapshot. Let's see how many does he get. He gets two snapshots. <coughs> and we have our first kill. One of our scouts. He's going to sit here and wait. I actually want to remember to have this. What these do, these reserve time units at the end of the turn. This is for snap, this is for aimed, and this is for auto. Uh, snapped is usually enough, and all it does is, is make sure when you can't spend those last amount of time units, and it leaves them open for opportunity fire at the end of the round. Always bring your scouts out. Give them some sort of cover. They, of course, will be open to uh, any attacks from here, but on the off chance that there's something over this way, the, the wheels will provide some sort of cover. Actually, really want to figure out the scrolling problems I'm having. Let me go ahead and save it and see if I can uh, tweak something here to get that fixed. So I'll be right back. all sorted.
that to do it. Or not, not clipping my cursor. go ahead and just throw these out there. These are electro flares and all they do is light the darkness so we can figure out where the edge of the map is. Good, that's what I thought. This is nice. We're going to be safe along this edge and we're going to want to figure out where that UFO has landed. I don't see anything in the immediate area just yet. Nice, me and Vax side by side. We get Vax's flare ready. If we leave this flare in his hand and we see an enemy, we're gonna. It greatly affects the firing rate of a two-handed weapon. However, it only takes two time units to drop something on the ground if it's already in your hand. So it's a nice way to start the game is to give all your scouts who are just waiting to go. That option. So now we have our snipers, and these guys will be setting up along these fences and walls as we go out and waiting for our scouts to reveal enemy movement. What? We're just going to load up to the front since we know nothing can shoot in from behind us, and then we'll have more time units when we're ready to actually move them. Now we have our, our rocket launcher, the best forward scout ever. He always gets uh, reserve time units as well. We just move him along. There we go, so he's now reserved. How many does he take? 31. Alright, so we can actually turn and just view it that way if we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving these guys towards the walls to get some firing positions ready. We're going to move him up here, how many does he have, into the grass and get him out of the line of fire of the rest of the ship. All right. So here we have this guy, he sees this alien, and odds are if he fires, he will trigger a reaction shot from him. What we can do now is we can take another one of our scouts. This is a little dangerous, mind you. You can go ahead. 13, 26, 39. So I get three snapshots, which is really nice with this. And he can fire at this alien without triggering a reaction shot, usually. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and not fire with him, but I'm going to move him over here. So that if he fires, there's a better chance he won't hit both of us in a single burst. And he has all his time units, so he's going to go ahead. How many will you take? He'll take 13. Alright, so if he kneels, which takes four time units, he'll now be protected by this fence from behind for most things and still have enough shots to go and shoot this guy, even though he can't see him. And look at Rudy, he is awesome. So we've hit uh, the sectoid, or the gray, since we don't really know what he is yet. And he might be wounded. I don't think they bleed, but uh, he has been. A <laughs> notified of our presence. And there's our UFO. You can tell just by that. So this guy, he's gonna go, he's gonna move towards this house, and he's gonna
cover the UFO until we get more troops in position. Now I'm going to pull one more rescue maneuver, bring him down, bring him over. Make a turn. I really need to fix this problem and see if I can hit him from here. No. Alright. So you can see reaction firing working well. He is now behind a door. Now, there are many ways to uh, attack this problem. Some people will just go in there and, and cover the area, but he does not have grenade curses. But I do. I hopefully should have enough timing to prime this grenade. 27 and throw, so that'll give me 40. The way priming works is this is the number of turns it'll take for it to explode once it's thrown. Zero means it'll explode at the very end of the turn. And we're going to see if we can land that right inside the door. Unfortunately not. And probably because the Sky Ranger is right in front of me. So, we are going to option number two. We're going to try to figure out where that alien is, and then use our snipers to weed him out. We're just going to operate on reaction fire at this point. Now, Poet is in a dangerous position. I have a prime grenade in my hand, and the alien can uh, attack me. So he's going to go ahead and he's going to get himself behind this as cover. And just hide there. Oh, this is driving me crazy. That's 14. So this right here would be the limit of the visual range when the sectoid comes out. Which means if we put our guy, I think here will do, he will be able to uh, have an opportunity to fire when he comes out. Unfortunately, I forgot to reserve my time units. Uh, you don't need to worry about your guys being close to light. You'd think it makes them more visible, but all aliens can see maximum range in light or dark. So it's not that big of a deal. That's not a deal at all, I should say. Alright, I notice we have... Uh, this wall has been shot out. And that means there's an alien somewhere around here. So we're going to go ahead. My weapons... My rifles, I should say, can't destroy walls just yet. But let me show you the glory that is the tank rocket launcher. I can't do an aim shot, unfortunately, but a snapshot should hopefully get right inside here and uh, <laughs> blow up the alien, the walls, and light everything on fire. It's quite fantastic. Let me go ahead here and be prime target to avoid getting killed. Keep my other guys alive. So we want this guy. around. I'm going to try to get him over here. Because this guy is going to come around. He's going to see one of these guys first, and he won't respond to the guys. 
that are outside his initial field of vision. There, it is a, a simple 90 degrees, which means when we're looking at it this way, it's uh, diagonal. So he'd be completely invisible over here, but uh, it, he should, aliens should go towards the closest common enemy first. So I'm gonna see if I can bring him down there. And just, this is very dangerous. You wanna avoid that whenever possible. And you are a sniper, and you're just going to sit here along that wall like the other guy was, and you're just going to wait. You're ready to go, and now I bring them out two or four at a time. Here it's a bit different, since we have a large number of aliens ready to go. Alright, so this guy is still going to be looking just to get eyes on that alien right now. Move him over here, a couple steps at a time. And that's as close as I want to go. Still gives me 14 time units for a snapshot. You're going to move up forward, kneel down, and actually extend the visual range with this guy. So we, the alien might come upstairs, or he might come around this door. We won't know until we get there. And you are also going to be moving forward. Alright, excellent. So where do we have him? He's just sitting in the back. Which means anyone in this sort of area should be able to shoot at him. Our sniper actually might be able to work. I've really got to fix this. Scrolling bug. You never, <laughs> if possible, you never try to, we're just going to sit here and actually aim. You never try to do an action with a guy with any of your scouts. It's a last ditch effort, you know, line the fire, so. And they might need those time units to actually run, <laughs> you know. You, on the other hand. We'll be shooting through your friend. I'm gonna go ahead and kneel. How many do you need? Fourteen. I'm gonna drop that for now. He sells enough to fire if we need him to. This will cancel him out forever for the turn. This will just cycle to the next soldier in the group. What we're going to do is actually we're going to get eyes on this alien with my tank. And we're going to use our sniper to try to kill this alien. Because we're leveling all our humans whenever possible. Tanks are great, but they don't level. <coughs> Dead on. What are your stats, by the way? 60 thief firing accuracy pretty decent. Once you get to 100 accuracy, you almost have guaranteed aim shots with most rifle units in the game. Alright, and Vax, we're going to go ahead and pull a rescue maneuver with you and get you next to this hedge. Now we have our scouts all fanned out, and now's when we start actually bringing snipers in. Now we got me as well. I still have my grenade. I might be able to throw it in there. We're going to give that a shot, since I have it on me. We're going to bring you out from under the wings. you got to pay attention to what's above you. We're going to bring you out to here. And I need 13, so I can't move anymore without losing the chance to throw. So we're going to give it a shot. This won't kill the guy, but it might throw up some smoke in order to hide our, our advance as we move further. We're going to bring you down here, and we're going to block off this entrance. Alright, we have one more...
more sniper en route. We are going to actually... 47. That oh, won't be enough because I have to turn. So we're going to go ahead and use our snapshots. To see if we can shoot this guy in here. They'll land a fire. Alright. Bring you down. And around. This way. Alright, so we got smoke up. Does obstruct their vision. And I have been sh Bernard was... Must have hit the ground right in front of him. Bernard is now the luckiest man alive in XCOM. Oh man, this is driving me crazy. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and save, and we're going to actually uh, cut the stream off right here. Because it is an unplayable stage for me, and I'm going to figure out if I can smooth out the mouse problem. Because you can see, as I get near the top, it goes to the window and actually stops it from moving. So, we will be back shortly.